Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Sunday. So I wanted to come on here and do a podcast. A lot of people are buzzing about this. A lot of folks are talking about the whole drama with Logic and Joe Budden. So if you guys don't know, I've been a fan of Logic for years. I've done, you know, videos on him, even gone live and talked about when he was going through his divorce with his wife. And I was like, there will be no Logic slander in the chat box. I've been a fan of Logic for a long time. And I really like him. I love his aura. I love his energy. That young man has been through so much in his life. And for him to be as positive and as well-rounded as he is, is a blessing and is very, very rare. And especially in the rap industry that he's in that can be so toxic, you know, just demonic, low vibrational. For him to constantly... Try to put on a brave face, make positive music, make music that makes people think. Um, to me, it has just made me respect him so much as an artist. And I know the song that made me really fall in love with his work was the 1-800 song that he came out with featuring Khalid and Alyssa Cara. And um, that was just a really deep song, especially for somebody as myself who has suffered from depression and, you know, suicidal thoughts and all that stuff that I talked about over the years. So that was amazing to have somebody put all of that into not only a song, but into visual form. So what's going down with Logic is this. Back on July 25th, I had posted on Instagram, you know, that basically Logic was retiring and he had took to social media and he broke down crying. He's one of those rappers. He has no problem showing his raw emotions. And that's something that you just do not really see in hip hop. And that's sometimes frowned upon. But I respect that. You know, I respect when somebody can take away their persona and you just see them in human form and you just see them just basically being themselves not being the rapper logic but being the man bobby okay so i really respected that i, I want you guys to go ahead and listen to a snippet of his retirement right here i appreciate you all <laughs> i bid you farewell and as always i'm obediently yours i won't be on the internet for the first time in my career because it hurts me and every time I released an album, I just wanted to be loved. And this time I don't check the internet because I finally love myself. So, thank you so much. And, as always, peace, love, and positivity. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in other endeavors. I am off to be a good father. Thank you. All right, so you guys just heard his retirement speech. So, of course, that went viral, and a lot of people were talking about this. And um, once again, Joe Budden, who for some reason has, like, this underlying beef with Logic, okay, who is probably one of the most unproblematic rappers out there. But Joe Budden sees him as easy prey. Joe Budden is constantly trying to bully him. And so he goes on, and he starts making fun of Logic's retirement. And even before this, he has said a lot of things in the past, you know, hinting that Logic is not black enough and, you know, just really throwing shade at him, even saying that his whole album was about him being biracial. When that's simply false, he's only had two songs about him being biracial. Even though you would think that most people are joking about this, some of them actually do believe that Logic has talked about being biracial on all of his eight projects that he's dropped since 2010. And one of those people that does actually believe this is none other than Joe Budden. Cole and Drake have both rapped about those two things and it's been fun what what's wrong with logic logic has an entire album about it okay that's number one don't listen to it he's had a few albums about it now notice how joe budden said that logic had a few albums about being biracial even though logic has only ever rapped about being biracial on one of his albums and this goes to show that even someone of authority who is a media outlet will get their facts wrong and people will speak on things they don't have all the facts about even joe budden Anytime he's talked about his biracial struggle has just been like in podcast form or in interviews where the interviewee has brought up his light complexion. But with you saying that you're biracial, yeah. but you kind of look
looked like he'd be a fifth member of the Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys, I should say. <laughs> the Blackstreet Black Black Boys. Boys. <laughs> Not the Black. I messed up my whole setup. But um, how are you? What are your thoughts with using the word nigga? Mm. It's a word that I use personally amongst my family or my friends because, you know, that's the circle that, that I was raised in. Um, it's natural, you know what I'm saying? Because I was raised in a black family. That's, that's, you know, that's all I know. However, I don't necessarily use this word uh, in, in a public uh, manner such as this. Uh, well, at least without addressing it first mm -hmm. because... That's just ignorant. Like, if I'm walking down the street talking about, oh, what's up, nigga? Da, da, somebody's going to fuck me up because right. I look white. Right. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> Exactly. You know what I mean? But if well, but Just when you said it right there, I almost punched you. <laughs> you know, but go ahead. But well, then it's like, oh, wait, okay. All right. I realize underneath. Nah, but. Uh, <laughs> nah. If you guys don't know, Logic has a very light skinned father. His father may have some mixed ancestry in him as well. His mother is a white woman. Logic looks very, very racially ambiguous to look at him. To me, he looks like a white man. Okay, let me keep that real. Sandy brown hair, blue eyes. Um, he, he very much looks very white or racially ambiguous, but he does have a black father. A 14-year-old European boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know I got swag. Yeah, my dad definitely did have swag, for sure, back in the day. I mean, he got a lot of women pregnant, so obviously. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, bottom line is, he see, he keeps his in his pants like he's supposed to. Yeah, see? I can't fade. Because he can't. Uh, no, he, that's what it is. All right, this is what it is. Like, motherfuckers look at me, and this is why it's so, it's so great, because... I, I represent myself well, you know what I'm saying? I talk with character and respect and I walk with it, uh, uh, like grace and, and whatever. So it's like, I don't smoke weed, I don't drink, I don't run around in the streets, I don't be fucking a million bitches, I don't this. And it's like, it's kind of sad to say, but it's because I saw it in my family. I saw it yeah. happen. So it's like, I saw my brothers hustling and being in the streets and, you know what I'm saying, running around with guns and fucking different bitches and getting people pregnant. I saw my sisters getting pregnant and having kids at 14, 15 years old. I saw, you know, what addiction did to my father. I saw what it did to my mother. And I think everybody in the family saw that and kind of followed it like they went in, in the yeah. last steps of, of you know smoking weed or drinking or running in the streets or this or that because that was the only example we had yeah. the only thing we saw but for whatever reason i don't know what it is i think it's just god that i saw that happen and just with me i was like this is what i'm not supposed to do right exactly you know and, and, and that's and that's that's a real big proud moment that i have i always say i'm proud of you because that's one thing and i didn't used to like coax try to coax you into it it was just like it was inevitable for us yeah that's what I, that's what I was like, it was inevitable you got to do and he was raised in a very abusive household his father was on drugs his brother sold drugs to the father the mother was a trip she was out here prostituting herself and anytime she got mad at logic she would call my types of niggers she even attempted to kill the little boy okay when he was a child i mean he has been through so much abuse he's seen so much this horrible shit in his childhood the fact that he's still standing and he's still as positive as he is it just shows the true testament to who logic is okay and that's one thing i really respect about him so of course you know joe budden has cracked jokes on him and stated that he's not black enough and you know even went in on his whole retirement so i'm going to go ahead and play you guys these clips go ahead and check this out while discussing logic's retirement with co-host jamil Maul clay and rory farrell budden mercilessly mocked the def jam artists logic you don't get to announce this <laughs> Why not? Every other rapper's done it. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? Why? Because we don't care. <laughs> Roy then tried to point out how Logic's announcement received over a million likes on Instagram. Budden reacted by turning the number into a joke. Yes, yeah. they do. He sells man uh, records. No, they, it's a million likes no, on his picture. No, Somebody cares. I know. They're happy that he's leaving. Why you think, <laughs> why, why you think I got the fucking celebration song queued up, man? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> While his co-host tried to play devil's advocate, Budden continued to insult Logic. Logic, man, give my guy some bail, Logic, man. Logic, he said. sold a ton of records. He has a lot of fans. He sells out mad oh, arenas. The, you should have retired a long time ago, Logic. For Who what? cares? He also made jokes about the cover art for Logic's final album and referred to the soon-to-be former rapper as trash. Budden, who once called Logic easily one of the worst rappers to ever grace a microphone, then made it clear his harsh assessment still stands. Get logic the f out of here. He's showing he's hey, playing off the hey, And this is not personal. No, this it's is not. It no, it's not. He feels personal. He is. It's a, personal. He is and has been horrible for a long time. <laughs> horrible? 
in Joe's opinion. Okay. That's fair. No, as a rapper, he could be the greatest guy in the world, like Vince Staples tells me. Everybody that met him tells me that he's awesome. Very nice guy. This is not a personal attack on a, who he is he as a, a person. He did a birthday shout out for my little... I, and check this out. I'm listening to this album. <laughs> Take that. You ain't going to try and get your retirement bars off on right, the if, if it's dope, you going to say it's dope? 100%. All right, cool. Last Thursday, July 16th, Logic revealed he would be retiring from rap after releasing his sixth studio album on July 24th. Since then, he's already plotted out his post-music life by inking a seven-figure deal with Twitch. Okay, so you guys just heard that. So, you know, there's a lot of nuances to this whole situation. You know, let, let's keep that real. Now, I've said this time and time again, that a lot of males in hip-hop, they love to perpetuate colorism. And I don't care if it's between females or men. You have Charlemagne the God. I've spoken about this in the past where he loves to go in on DJ Envy and call him waffle colored and everything else. He did actually come come back afterwards and apologize and said that, that, that he's light skinned and he's he's sensitive all the time, mm -hmm. which is something you said. Absolutely. Waffle colored Negroes are emotional. Waffle colored Negroes are nothing but feelings that the, the yellow emoticon that has tears coming out of it, that represents light skinned people. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm included in that. No, you're white. Okay, so that's different. Waffle colored. Waffle colored. Beige. Beige. Khaki colored are light skinned people. Okay, so that would be Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Drake. Drake. Tyga. Beige. Oh. August Alcina? Nah. Nah. Not August. Okay. Nah. Envy. Envy. Yeah. That's, they're yellow. They're khaki colored. So he's included in that. Absolutely. Um, Sensitive for no reason. I didn't like the Chris Brown thing, though. A lot of these black men in hip hop love to perpetuate colorism. They love to go in on black women, especially if they're dark skin, and talk about their mannish features or, you know, throw up memes clowning them and making fun of them. In the same breath, these same men will clown light skin and biracial men in hip hop and say they're not black enough or they don't see them as equals, but then they have no problem chasing women with the same features. So the whole situation to me is very, very hypocritical because. One, Joe Budden, if people were to talk about Sin Santana the way that he talks about logic, he'd be in his feelings. What's up? Hey, T-Sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.